welcome all of you so welcome in eduethics and today we are starting with a overall revision of our shipwreck chapter so actually we have done so many revisions so many revisions of shipwreck but also we have to do more and more so here we are going to revise the chapter i mean we are going to start the overall revision actually in previous videos i have just only explained you the chapter but in this video i am going to read the chapter with you so you have to go through it when i am reading okay on your own now, now today i am not going to explain you the chapter you have to go go through the chapter on your own okay and you have to read along with me so the name of the chapter is shipwrecked and today we are going to start with a quick revision or you can say a overall revision of shipwrecked chapter with me so this is chapter 4 let's start so let us begin with this because it is really very very important now for 7 days a terrible storm raged at sea the ship carrying the robinson family tossed like a top huge waves battered the ship leaks sprung up everywhere the masts had been split by the lightning and the sails ripped by the howling wind the ship was in immediate danger of sinking so be brave children said mr robinson to his four sons red the eldest at 15 nodded the other three boys 13 year old ernest 10 year old jack and 7 years old franz tried to stay calm but their fear grew as the wind and rain outside increased even mrs robinson shot a frightened look at her husband then aimed the roar of the waves crashing against the ship the robinsons heard two shrill cries land land was the first followed a minute later by the lower away men mr robinson and fred dashed upon deck from there they saw the last live boat pulling away the captain and crew the captain and crew were abandoning the ship mr robinson shouted after them and waved his arms to sign them to return for the for his family it was of no use the lifeboat slipped off to the foaming sea leaving the robinsons behind they were the only humans left in the ship now A sudden jolt knocked Mr. Robinson and Fitz to the deck. The ship had run between two large rocks, jutting out of the sea. Fitz and his father could see the faint outline of a rocky coast about three miles away. It was land. All right, but how would they get without a lifeboat? Mr. Robinson and Fritz rejoined the rest of the family below deck. With as much courage as he could muster, Mr. Robinson said, "We are the only ones left." 
the captain the captain crew the cap the captain and crew have taken the last lifeboat our only chance is to sit down out this storm here he paused looking at the troubled faces of his family let's try to get some more rest now we will need our strength in the morning however try as they would none of the robinsons slept a wink at the night what meanings master gather set out this storm stay in the ship and wait for the storm to end the next morning the storm began to taper off soon only a stiff breeze and a light mist remained the waves were calm and in the distance the rocky shore of an island could be seen now step Mr Robinson thinking out loud how do we get ashore swimming is out of the question any ideas each boy turned and looked at the others then fritz spoke up how about a raft father i don't think we could make a raft strong enough to carry all of us safely to shore fred he replied no we need something else father said jack can't we all get into a big tub and just float here remember how i used the old wooden bathtub sails around the pond back home okay word meanings taper off decrease gradually raft logs of wood tied together and used as a boat here hold means here the place in a ship where goods are stored next Mr Robinson snapped his fingers why what jack i think you have something there those four big casks down below let's bring them up on deck i have an idea the four boys and their father went down to the ship's hold together together they managed to get the four heavy casks up on deck there mr robinson turned them on their sides and sorted each one in half then he placed them together in a single row by the water's edge he nailed a plank to the bottoms of the eight half two other planks were nailed to their sides and a rope attached to one and the other end of the rope was tied to the to the part of the ship's railing that had not broken away carefully father and sons pushed the casks into the water they floated through at a sharp angle mr robinson took some empty jugs and closed their tops then he tied the jugs to the cask 
to balance them. Right, he said, smiling for the first time in eight days. Let's get some supplies from the ship. Then we will all be off. The family collected canvas to make a tent, a chest of carpenters' tools, rippers, pistols, knives, fishing rods, and in an iron pot, plant seeds and two cases of dried soup and biscuits. All were put into the two floating casks and would not be carrying family members. Just as they were about to climb into the casks, cut off the rope and shove off with the Paddles. They were had. They had found in the hole. A loud noise. Noise rose up from below deck. The hens and roosters cried, "Young France, please let's take them with us." The ducks and geese on board had already been set to free, to free, to fend out themselves. Stay free. Stay here, said Mr. Robinson. I will get them. He climbed out of his cask, went below and returned with a canvas bag in his hands. He then gently emptied the contents into one of the supply casks. The hens clucked and the roosters crowded as he placed a wire mesh on the top of the cask. We will come back for the other animals when we can set. When we can, said Mr. Robinson. Chest A large, strong wooden box. Show off. Here, push the raft and begin moving on water. At last, the Robinsons were off dipping their paddles into the water as they headed the cask towards the shore. Couple of loud splashes from behind, however, made them turn their heads around. The two dogs, Juno and Turk. So the two, the name of the two dogs are Juno and Turk. had just dived in after them. They swam alongside the casks. Once on shore, the Robinson's family unloaded the supplies, set free the hens and roosters and let the two dogs run loose. The four brothers then fanned out to, the col to collect wood for fire. So this story is written by Joe David Wells. So he is the author of this story. So this story tells us about the 
corporation of the family the love of family and we can face any difficulty if we have the strength to do that right so this story gives us many uh, you know what many morals and this is the amazing story written by john david wiss and today is the last day of doing the shipwreck so from now we will not do shipwreck again so the shipwreck is completed we have done everything of shipwreck uh, we have completed so many revisions of shipwreck so you can see them in our channel so now after that we, have, we will going to revise the chap uh, the two more chapters that are life at hotel school and one more is the the sort things are beautiful then our these three chapters will going to be completed and then we have to move further so thank you for watching this video and i hope you uh, have gone gone through this chapter and you have also understood what i uh, want to tell you so please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and please don't also don't forget to see the previous videos of that chapter in which i have explained you the whole chapter of raindrops the shipwreck the hot in school and also the uh, the swift things are beautiful i'm going to upload more videos actually uh, i am not able to upload the videos from laptop so i am continuously uploading the videos from phone so don't worry i will upload every video for you thank you for watching this video thank you so much